Hey guys, what I've got here again is the Go XLR. I did a live stream about this the other day. I unboxed it live and I did some audio test and played around with it. I was actually planning on doing a full review of this today, show you how it works, tell you what I like, tell you what I don't like, etc. But I've been doing a ton of audio tests today and I thought that I would share that. I've got a lot of things set up here. I think that some people will benefit from what I'm going to show you. Certainly people that are interested in buying this or people that have got it already and maybe they've not really thought outside the box as to how they could use this. Now, I've got three or four audio interfaces here. I've got three connected up and I've got four different microphones. I've got two Shure SM7Bs plugged into different audio interfaces. I've got a boom mic above and I've also got the Blue Yeti here which you can actually route through the Go XLR. And that's what I want to show you in this video. I want to show you the different options you have because one of the limitations that you have with the Go XLR is that it only has one XLR mic input. So that is one of the kind of limitations of this device. This is a, an audio interface. You can see the different options here. I can put the microphone down. I can put it back up like that. I can control my headphones. I can, you know, mix things. I can sample things. I can Go! play Homer, different things like that. And I can also change my voice. So what I can do here is set the effects and then I can make my voice go deep and then I can make it go high. So I can bring it right down like this and I can keep talking or I can bring it back right like this. And then all of a sudden my voice is really squeaky. So my voice is back to normal now. Now, to be honest, you know, I, I, I'm an older guy. This is probably not the kind of thing that I would use all the time. If I'm streaming and playing about with it, yeah, okay, maybe it's funny every now and then. You've, there's a thing like for beeping if you're swearing so you can tell someone to f off, that type of thing. There are some cool features here. Um, I, I will do a full review and I'll let you guys know what I feel. There's some things I don't like about it. The headphone amp isn't that good. The audio interface, it, it, that side of it, I'm, I'm not 100% on yet either. But there are some cool things here. But one of the limitations is that you only have this one XLR input at the back here. But what you do have is you have a line in port and you have a mic in port. Now I've got this back to front right now. But you can see here there's a, a mic in. There's a, uh, that's for headphones and there's a line out and there's line in. Now these actually give you quite a, a few different options. There's also an optical in cable there as well, which means that you can get your game audio from your Xbox One or your PlayStation 4. But you could, in theory, route audio from an audio interface into this port using an optical cable. Um, now the thing is with the line in and the optical cable is that you can get audio using those ports and you can get audio in. So I can put audio, you know, I can use a mic through my Zoom F8 here. I can run, uh, route the, the audio through that, put it in via the line in port. But the way that it's set up is that if I do that, then I can't modify the audio which means that I can't use the, the, the pitch effect or anything like that, which means I can't change the audio, make my voice squeaky, make my voice sound like a megaphone or a robot or anything like that. I can't use any of those effects if it's in the line in, but there is a 3.5 millimeter head uh, mic in port. If you put any audio interface line out cable into the mic in port, you can do that with your Blue Yeti, Yeti. you can do it with the Zoom interface, you can do it with any audio interface. If you do that, then you can actually adjust lots of different things. So for example, I could have eight people connected to this Zoom F8 and I could control everyone's voice at the same time. You can do it individually, but with that, all of that coming as one signal into the mic in port. Yeah, you've, you've got a few options there. And that's what I want to show you in this video. Now, there's going to be a lot of audio tests here. My, my voice will be going up and down. It's, it's just one of those things because certain levels aren't, aren't going to be set correctly because I'm jumping around lots of different devices. And if I show you at the side here, you can see there's a there's another audio interface there. This is my Audient ID22. My Audient ID22, is it's only about £10 or so more expensive than the Go XLR. So really, these two are in the, the same price bracket, but I'm not comparing them per se. This is a dedicated audio interface. This is... Um, you know, the Go XLR is a, an audio interface and a mixer and a sampler and all that. But what I can show you here is this. It's not connected. This is just a separate audio interface that I had on my desk. I've got the Go XLR, I've got the Zoom F8, and I've got the Audient ID22. I've got the Boom mic connected to that. I've got a Shure connected to that. And I've got another Shure SM7B connected to this. But what I can actually do is route my Boom mic through the Audient ID22 into the Zoom F8 and then route it from that to that to the Go XLR. 
Now, it sounds a little bit ridiculous to do that. It sounds ridiculous to do that. And no one would really need to do that. But what I'm trying to do is demonstrate that it can actually be done. It can be done. So, um, if I get the cable right, where is the cable? Uh, here we go. So again, this cable, this one here, and I'll show you this in the overhead camera. This is the cable from mic in. So there's the mic port. I know it's upside down just now, it's just because it's connected. So the, the mic. That out. I'll take that out for a second. Um, you can see it kind of defaulted to the 3.5 millimeter mic there. So one way day, I'm going to do connect this to this to the output, the sub output of the Zoom F8. You know, as I was saying, the Audion ID22 is about the same price as Go XLR. This is discontinued, but it's about 900 when it was out. It's a, it's a much more expensive audio interface. But what I'm going to do is I want to change to my Samsung, and I'll show you the the Go XLR app. I'm going to show you mic setup. So right now, I have it set up as a condenser microphone. Now, the Shure SM7B is a dynamic microphone, but I'm using a FET head to amplify the audio. So that's why I need to put it as a condenser because I need to provide phantom power. But what I'm going to do right now, and I can show you this for a second, what I'm going to do right now is put in the, the, the cable coming from my Zoom F8, and I'm going to put it into the mic in port. And you can see the audio is different right away. And if I jump back here, I switched to 3.5 millimeter. I've got it down really low, like that. But you can see I'm through 3.5 millimeter now. But what I need to do now is drop the audio, drop the audio level from my Zoom F8, and I'll drop the audio level down to a more appropriate level. Now, the way that I've got it set up now, like that's not that's not on just now, by the way. What you're listening to is, and I can show you this. This mic, this is my boom mic, right? So watch this. Now, that is using a, a, a yellow XLR cable and it's going all the way around and it's going all the way around into here. So the boom mic, which I'm pressing there, is going round to this Audion ID22, this audio interface, and then I've got two mono cables out. These cables go all the way around like that. And if we follow it around, you can see this cable comes in to my Zoom F8. So this is from the mic boom arm above. And then the signal's going all the way out again from the sub out into the Go XLR. And yeah. Now, right now, it is important to note that this is an absolute ridiculous setup. No one needs to set up a boom mic and set it up through two audio interfaces before you get to the XLR. That's ridiculous. The reason I'm doing this is because you can. This is an option. This is something that you can do. You can route signals through an audio in another audio interface. Now, I would use maybe one of these. And what that would allow me to do would be to use all these mixer effects to change my, my voice, voice like that. I can use all these effects, but if I was using the signal through the Audion ID22 over there or the Zoom F8 here, it means that I could have eight people or 10 people or however many people you want and then route the signal through the Go XLR. I wouldn't route it through two of them. I'm just demonstrating right now that it can actually be done. And as a, you know, as a reminder, my my uh, my um, audio is going to go up and down a little bit just because I don't have the settings right now. Now, this, not obviously switched on right now, but I'll turn this around just now. And you can see that, oh, I forget there. So number two is the one being used right now. And again, that's the boom mic, but I can change to this, right? So, so now, now I am using the Shure SM7B, but I'm not using the Shure SM7B that's connected to my Go XLR. Now I'm not trying to confuse, confuse you guys, this one, you can't hear it. This is the one that's going through directly. This is the green cable. This is the green cable that's directly into the Go XLR. You can see the green cable there. But the one that I'm using is this one. It's the white cable. And if I move this out of the way, you can see that the, the white XLR cable down here, if I get that out of the way, is, is kind of along here. So this is the white cable from this one here. 
So this is the white XLR cable and this is going to the zoom and then I'm going to the Go XLR. This is probably more like how I would use this. And again, I can change my voice. Like that, I can change my voice. It's really bizarre. I can change my voice like that and apply effects. So the microphone is plugged into the Zoom F8, but it's going into the Go XLR. Now, if you look at the side here, I've got eight XLR inputs. I could have seven friends here right now, and we could all be talking, and I could change the effect of everyone at the same time. Couldn't do it individually, but again, I'm just trying to demonstrate that you can actually route different things into the Go XLR. It's a little bit annoying that they've only got one XLR input. I don't know why they didn't just plug in two. Now, I can understand... I guess one reason why they don't so they don't have to add lots of different mixers for everyone but I think it would have been good to have two XLR inputs and give people the option you know of just putting more mics in it would have made this a much better device but they've not which means that you'd have to use another audio interface if you want to add some friends into the equation so again right now I'm in a XLR cable one through my Zoom F8 I can switch to the boom mic up there so now I'm going back through the audio ID 22. So now I've got audio interface one over there going through this one, going into the XLR. I can quickly jump back and now I am using the, the Zoom F8. So all of this, all of the, all the, the mics just now, they're not going through, they're not directly connected to the Go XLR. You know, the cable isn't connected to it. They're connected through another audio interface and then they're connected to the Go XLR. All, that, all of this is stupid, really, as far as what I'm doing right now. You wouldn't, I wouldn't set it up uh, you know, through two audio interfaces, but this way, the way I've got it set up right now is kind of how I would set it up if I wanted to add effects and use the Go XLR during a live stream. If I've got two or three friends, I could write them through the Zoom F8 here, this other audio interface, because this has got four XLR inputs there. It's got four at the other side, and we can all be connected, and then we can run it through the Go XLR. Now... I genuinely don't think most people would do that. They'd probably use something like this. This is the Blue Yeti. But what I'm going to do for a second, I'm going to bring up the the Samsung monitor again. I'm going to go to Mic Setup. And instead of the here, I'm going to set it back up again. And I'm going to set myself up the condenser mic because now I am using the... Oh, I'm loud. I'm loud now, aren't I? So now I am using the, um, can I turn that down a little bit? I'll turn this down a little bit. Hopefully it's not too loud for you guys. I, p I apologize, the levels are going up and down. Um, so yeah, so I'm now connected um, and I'm connected, I'll bring this down. So now I am connected. You can see the green cable here. This is the mic that I'm using. I am directly connected to the Go XLR. I'm not going through any other audio interface right now. Green cable, directly to this green cable. Yeah, I'm just connected to the Go XLR. But the reason I did that is because what I want to do is steal. I want to steal this cable. And this is the cable, as a reminder, this is the cable that's into the mic input there. So there's the mic input next to the head. So there's the headphones, which I'm listening through right now. You've got the mic inf input. So... As I say, because I've got a, you know a few, I've got four audio interfaces on this table right now. I do have more options than most people, but I would say there's a lot of people who've got the Go XLR and they might have the Blue Yeti. Now that gives you a few extra options because, for example, if I'm downstairs streaming with my friend and we don't want to be sitting with headphones on, we can use the Blue Yeti and we can stream sitting on the couch. But I could run both of us or three people or four people and run it through the Go XLR. Now what you have to do is you take your Blue Yeti. Make sure that it's powered on. But then what you're going to do is take your your 3.5 millimeter cable, 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter. One side goes into the, the mic input and the other one will go into the headphone input of your Blue Yeti. So essentially I'm going from the headphone cable from the Blue Yeti to the mic input of the GoXLR. And if I jump back here, I need to change back to 3.5 millimeter and the audio is a little bit low now I'm going to put it up a little bit and now you can hear me but I should be able to turn me up now just by increasing the volume of the headphones 
So now by increasing the, the volume of the headphones, I can change the gain level. I can also change the gain level here via the mixer as normal. I can put the audio up and down like that. I can change it the gain level at the back of the Blue Yeti. But just so you guys know, I am using the Blue Yeti. You can tell that. You can tell that I'm using the Blue Yeti. So I'll do an overhead shot just to show you exactly what's going on here because I know I'm jumping around a lot. So what I'm doing right now, I've got the Blue Yeti. That's what's plugged in. This headphone cable is going through all the way around here and it's going um, to here. Sorry, this is a long cable. So this, this is coming from the Yeti headphone port and it's going to the mic input there, the mic input. And that is how I'm able to connect the Blue Yeti to the Go XLR. And there's a lot of reasons why someone would maybe want to do that because if you use the Go XLR, if you use the Go XLR, you have, if I bring it up, you have a compressor, you have a DSer, you have a noise gate. These are all things which can improve the Yeti. They can improve the audio from the Yeti. The Blue Yeti is a condenser microphone, so it's, it's not like a dynamic microphone like this, which you just talk up close and, and you're going to eliminate typing and all this. If I'm making any noises my on my table here, you will hear them through the Blue Yeti, but of course I don't need the headphones on, I can just talk like this. I don't need to monitor it, but this is an audio video, so I will. Um, but yeah, there are reasons why someone would use this. If you have a Blue Yeti microphone and then you've jumped to something like the Go XLR and you might be changing to an XLR a microphone, just be aware that with the Blue Yeti, you can connect it to the Go XLR and it's as simple as just running a headphone cable, a 3.5 millimeter headphone cable. In instead of, you know, connecting the USB cable or anything like that, you just run the 3.5 millimeter cable all the way around to the mic in port and that's it. You can do it through the line in port. That is an option, but again, if I do that to the line in port, and I'll show you I that. am the ch <laughs> I'm patting Homer here in the <laughs> Um So I'm, I'm going to show you that just now. I'm going to demonstrate that. So I've got um I've got it through the mic in, which means that I can apply effects. I can apply effects and I can do this with my voice. And I can move it around like this and change different things like that. Um I can go robot, I can go a megaphone, I can go robot, megaphone. Lots of different options I can do, and I can do it through the Go XLR. Now, what I'm going to do here is take it from the mic input and I'll put it to the line in. So, can you guys hear me? I can't hear myself now. Can you hear me? So, what I need to do, put myself back in. Okay. That should be better now. Right. So you can still hear me. I actually changed the phone's cable there. That was a complete mistake. Uh, I changed the headphone cable there by mistake. So basically right now, I've got it going into the line in port. And I can change the line in volume here via the mixer. I can put up the gain level of the line in port here. Now, if I'm just talking like this, there's no real difference between the line in cable and the mic in cable. If I'm just talking like this, doesn't matter whether you're using line in or mic in, no difference at all. But the difference is if I push effects, I move it about, nothing is happening. Absolutely nothing is happening. Uh, and that's the main difference. That's the main difference between the mic in port, the line in and the optical in port is that you cannot apply any kind of voice effects or any anything like that. I can still run, no! I can still run the, the, the sampler but as far as the voice effects, no voice no voice effects can apl be applied to the line in port or to the game in port. So that is just not an option, which is why if you, I mean, sometimes that's maybe what you want, but I would say that for most people, what you want to do is route this cable through to the mic in port. Like that. So now, once again, I can change my voice like this. So I'm going to have more options. Sorry, I'm just looking at my audio levels over there. Uh, I'm going to have more options if I put it through the mic input. But there's maybe there's maybe a certain situations where you don't want to do that. For example, maybe you want to use this microphone here. You want to run it through this microphone. Um, and I, I can actually show you that just now. So for example, I'm going to go back to the, the, the microphone, right? Uh, mic setup, I'm going to change the condenser. So I'm changed back to condenser, which means that 
this is the microphone that you're using. This is the microphone that you're hearing right now. But what I'm going to do is take the signal from the Blue Yeti here. I know I've got a lot of cables here, but I'm going to take the signal from the Blue Yeti into the line in. And now, you're going to hear me in stereo. It's not going to be nice, but... So, you can hear me in stereo. So, basically what I was doing there was showing you that you can still use an XLR mic whilst plugging in the Blue Yeti. There are some situations that might be desirable because maybe what you want to do is, for example, talk through your dynamic mic or condenser mic, run your effects through this microphone, but then maybe what you want to do is run the Blue Yeti into the line in port so that you can maybe you want to pick up background effect, maybe you want to pick up, um, you know, voice, I don't know, you could be, maybe want to just pick up audio from friends that are talking in the background, or maybe you want to be the main guy on the mic and the only one that can control effects and everyone else, you're just picking up their audio. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. And the Go XLR is not a perfect audio interface. I think actually the audio interface side of it is maybe, a, you know, a part of it where, it, you know, it's maybe not as good as it could have been. But the sampler and the effects, you know, there's a lot of things that you can actually do with this. And I think that one of one of the things when I when I saw this, when I looked at the back of this and I saw one XLR input, I was really put off with, with buying it. But if you have an existing audio interface, as you can see, you can run lots of different things through the other audio interface and then put it into this and keep this as the master. This will be the slave. Um, or if you want, you can use a mic such as the Blue Yeti. And the Blue Yeti... You know, it's not the best mic in the world, but it's quite versatile and it's and quite useful. And what I would say is that the Go XLR would make the Blue Yeti a much better mic because you do have all these additional options. You've got the compressor, you've got the gate, you've got the de -esser. You can you go into the graphic equalizer and you can change what's going on. Interestingly, Blue Yeti are actually releasing another mic because they realize that people want this functionality. So this has been a long-ish video. I don't want to totally confuse people here. I've jumped around a lot and I've showed you four different microphones. I've run through three or four different audio interfaces and showed you lots of uh, diff different setups here. The reason I've did this is not to kind of overcomplicate things and, and show you, you know, complicate things and make things more complex than they need to be. I'm just showing you this because basically this is more flexible than I think most people realize as far as, you know, mic inputs go. As far as mic inputs go, it's a little bit annoying that it only has one XLR. They really should have added two minimum, I I believe. But with the, the optical input, with the with, with the game and optical in and with the line in and line out ports, you can use this in a lot of different ways and expand upon what this you know what this can do. I think that I think it's worth doing. I think that is worth doing. Now, many people that would buy the Go XLR, I think many people that would that have maybe bought this. They probably don't have another audio interface and i would say that there's probably more people that have jumped from the blue yeti to the go xlr than someone that's went from a bigger audio like a, a mainstream professional audio interface going to the go xlr i think most people uh, they'll be going from something like the blue yeti or something else like that so if you are coming from a usb microphone and you've still got it hanging around you can simply route the headphone port from your other mic and put it into the mic input and you can continue to use it and you can get all those effects if you don't have an XLR input. So there's a lot of things there. I will do a separate video, like, you know, look at all of this in detail. This is, if I jump over here, this is quite a flexible little device as far as, you know, what it can do, you know, all the different colors and all that. Um, it's got a lot of different samplers and different things you can do as well. I'll delve deeper in this in a separate video. But in this video, I just wanted to show you, yes, you can do a lot of different things with this. Um, it's a lot more flexible than you would think because of that line in and the optical in ports. They really do help expand what this can do. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about this, please do ask. I am not an expert on this at all. I apologize with the audio levels going up and down a lot in this video, but trying to sync mics going through three different audio interfaces is not easy, certainly when you're changing between different microphones. But I, ho I hope I've demonstrated that there is a lot that can be done with this interface. You're not just limited with one XLR cable going in. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you all in the next one. Take care.